What's up YouTube? It's a new year and that means it's time to talk about Affinity versus Adobe again. Specifically this time, I want to talk about which suite of apps is best for new designers and for students. Those who are just getting started in design, just starting to work on creative projects. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we're talking about whether Affinity suite of apps or Adobe suite of apps is best for new designers. You might be a high school or a college student who's just starting to learn about design. Maybe you're somebody who works a job that's not a design job, but you're being asked to do some design related things like create a flyer or a pamphlet or something like that. Or maybe you're just somebody who's interested in learning more about design because you find it intriguing. Whatever you're doing, I just wanna say welcome. Design is a fantastic field and it is so much fun. So I'm glad you're here. I have lots of courses for new designers which are linked in the description to this video. So feel free to go ahead and check those out if you're just starting to learn. Okay, let's talk about the software. When you're deciding on design software, I think there are three things that you need to consider. The first one is capability. Can it do the things you want it to do? The second thing is compatibility. Can it produce the files that you need or the people that you work with need? And the third thing is going to be cost. How much does it cost and can you afford it? Now, depending on what you're doing with design, one of these may be more important than the others, or they may all three be equally important. For example, if you don't work with a lot of people and you're just trying to get started and learn some things, then cost might be a really important factor for you. You may not have very much to spend on this hobby. But if you're getting started as a freelancer who's going to be working on projects with teams inside of a company, you may care a lot about compatibility because you may need to be able to share files with them. So let's take a look at each of these. Specifically, the software that we're going to be talking about today are the three Affinity apps, Affinity Designer, which is a vector editor, Affinity Photo, which is a raster editor, and Affinity Publisher, which is a desktop publisher. And on Adobe side, we're going to be talking about Creative Cloud, but specifically, we're going to be talking about Illustrator, which is a vector editor, Photoshop, which is a raster editor, and InDesign, which is a desktop publisher. So you can see these compare very well to each other because they're all the same type of apps. So the first thing that we're interested in is capability. Can it do the thing that you want it to do? Well, as a new designer, you may not be sure exactly what you want to do, and that's okay, but try and think through the kinds of things that you'd like to produce, and then look up things that talk about producing those in each of the programs to see if they can. Say you want to create logos, look up creating a logo in Illustrator, and look up creating a logo in Affine Designer, and then you can see how they work and can you do it. And there's going to be videos for these apps about all different kinds of things. Another thing you can do is you can watch my videos where I compare the tools in each of these programs. So I compare the tools in each of these pairs of programs depending on which type of editor they are. And you can check out those videos in this playlist which I'll link right here. So really determine the capability. Another great way to determine the capability is to take the free trial. Affinity and Adobe both have free trials. So you can download the apps, try them out, and actually produce something in them. See if they have the tools that you want. Now I realize that as a new designer, you may not know which tools you want. So just get a tutorial and follow along. See if you can follow somebody making the type of thing that you're envisioning yourself making. And don't worry, if down the road things change, you can always change apps later because the skills that you learn in one will be easily transferable to the skills in the other. So capability is kind of a draw. I think both of these apps will work super well for new designers. They have the same basic functions and can do basically the same things. It's really when you get into really special niche territory that one app might start to shine above of another. The one caveat to this is InDesign and Publisher. If you're working in a print shop or you're going to be working with a lot of printers, InDesign still seems to really hold the upper hand on Publisher in terms of working with professional printers. It just has some functions and some formats that professional printers like that aren't available in Affinity Publisher. Okay, next let's talk about compatibility. Can you produce the files that you need inside of this app? This will really affect you if you're going to work with other people or if you're a student taking a class and the teacher or professor requires you to submit a specific file type. The main file types in Adobe programs are the PSD in Photoshop, the AI file in Illustrator, and the INDD file in InDesign. So these are the default file types for projects produced in those different apps. And if you're working with a team of people who are using Adobe programs, you might need to be able to share these file types of work that you've done with them so that they can continue to work on them. Or you may need to receive files in these file types that they've created using Adobe programs. We're talking about the Adobe file types because those are definitely the industry standard and those are the ones you are most likely to encounter. So when it comes to PSDs, that's actually pretty easy. A lot of apps can create and open PSDs and the Affinity programs definitely can do that. So if it's PSDs, that you're worried about, you can still use Affinity. But when it gets into AI files or INDD files, 
gets a little bit more complicated and confusing because the affinity programs can neither open nor produce AI files or INDD files. So what do you do? Well, when it comes to vector work produced in Affinity Designer or that you're receiving from Illustrator, you really have to use SVG files, an open file type that you can save your vector art as. But they can lose some features. If there's a feature that Illustrator supports that isn't supported by the SVG file type, you can lose that feature when you transfer it. So just be aware of that. It can get a little bit tricky, but it can work. InDesign is a whole nother ball game because the INDD file can't be read by Affinity Publisher and it can't be produced by Affinity Publisher. This is one of the reasons that if you're working a lot with printers, you might want to invest in InDesign. Though Affinity Publisher is still a very powerful tool for creating professional looking documents. You can import an IDML file, which is an InDesign compatibility file into Affinity Publisher. And that works some of the time, depending on how complicated the document is. So if you are working with somebody who's using InDesign, you just need to have them save it or export it as an IDML file. If they package a file, they can just send you the package and the IDML file will be there. So you can in one way go from InDesign into Affinity Publisher. Going from Affinity Publisher to InDesign is virtually impossible at this point. It can't save INDD or IDML files. So you pretty much have to use a PDF, which only works if the person you're sending it to doesn't really intend to make any edits to it at all. So if you're working with a team and it requires INDD files, going with Affinity is going to really be difficult for you. But I don't know that that's really the case for too many new designers, especially those looking into graphic design. If you're looking into publication and layout design, then maybe that's something more to consider. But if we're keeping score here, we do have to give this one to Adobe. So Adobe definitely wins compatibility because they basically control the industry. And so everybody in the industry is using these file types. All right, before we go on to cost, let's talk about the sponsor of this video. The sponsor of this video is me, my Ben Designs courses, because you might be a new designer and you might be wanting to learn more about design principles or programs. I have lots of courses over on Skillshare that are aimed at new designers just like you. So go ahead and check out the links in the description of this video for those courses. Those include my design basics courses, which I have free access links to in the description of this video. So you can take them for free and start learning how to be a designer. So go ahead, check out those links in the description after you're done watching this video. Now let's get back to the video and talk about cost. All right, lastly, let's talk about cost. So cost can be a really important factor for a new designer. If you're just trying to get into it and you're not making any money designing yet, then the cost of the application that you're using to do the design can be really, really important to you. And I don't think it's any secret that Affinity absolutely stomps Adobe when it comes to cost. This is where Affinity really shines because the Affinity apps are just $55 a piece. So if you buy all three apps, you're in for 165 US dollars and you get to keep those licenses for life. It's not a subscription, you just pay it once and you're done. And if you don't need all of the apps, you can just purchase individual ones. Say you just need a fan designer, just buy that for $55. Whereas on the Adobe side, it gets a lot more expensive because you're paying for a subscription monthly to the Creative Cloud. Now the Creative Cloud includes lots more apps than just the three we're talking about, but these are the three that are critical for graphic designers. Every graphic designer will probably use most if not all of these three types of programs during their design career. That's a vector program, a raster program, and a desktop publishing program. So you may not need all of the other apps that are included with the Creative Cloud, but you'll still be paying for them. Now, Adobe does try and cut a deal to students. So during your first year, if it's the first time you're signed up for Creative Cloud and you're a student, and you do have to be able to prove that you are a student, then you can get a deal to get the Creative Cloud for $19.99 or 20 bucks a month. So that comes out to about $240 a year that you'd be paying for Creative Cloud during your first year. After that first year is up, Adobe actually bumps up the price on the student account. So they actually bump it up to about $30 a month, which means that your next three years or so in college will actually be $360 for the year. So you can see how this starts to add up very quickly. But once you're done being a student, it gets even worse in terms of cost because then you will be spending $53 a month for the Creative Cloud. $53 a month every month. And that's if you lock in a yearly contract. If you don't lock in a yearly contract, it's actually more expensive if you want to pay month to month. 
So that's the bad news for Adobe. Affinity definitely wins this one in terms of just simple cost. But let's talk about another thing when it comes to cost. Let's talk about the hardware necessary to run these programs. You need something that these programs can run on. And the truth of the matter is that Adobe programs are resource hogs. They can bring a computer to its knees very easily because they hog up resources. The code is kind of old and it doesn't run super efficiently. So you may need a better computer than you currently have to run Adobe. Whereas Affinity has really focused on efficiency, especially in their update last year, their 1.10 update. They really focused on efficiency, not so much bringing new features, but just making the apps run better. So they run really well, even on some pretty low end hardware. And if you want to work in the tablet space at all, you're probably going to be working on an iPad, which is great because there's a very low level entry iPad and I just did a video about creative work on the iPad last week you can go ahead and check that out here but it's a great place to do creative work but the Adobe programs on iPad they're just not good so they made kind of a bad version of Photoshop for the iPad that they called full Photoshop but it wasn't and then they made a version of Illustrator that actually worked pretty well but has been really limited in terms of the features that it has whereas on the Affinity side they have brought full versions of both Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer to the iPad they're full featured, you can do essentially everything on them that you would need to do. So if you just wanna work on an iPad, pretty much need to go with Affinity at this point. So do you consider the hardware cost and whether or not you can actually run these applications? Of course, if you download the free trials onto your computer, that's a good way to find this out. So yeah, that's about all there is to say about price. Affinity absolutely stomps Adobe. So if you are really strapped for cash, if you can't pay the price of Adobe, then Affinity is probably for you unless it's worth the cost to you because you're going to make it up in issues of compatibility or capability. Then you might need to go ahead and pay for Adobe, but you might have it be a little tight while you wait for those paychecks to start coming in from the work that you're doing. And if you're just learning, you're just kind of doing it for fun or hobbyist or just to kind of get your feet wet, then Affinity is probably for you before you invest in a big long-term financial commitment. So that's it. Those are the three things that I think are important to consider as a new designer when you are selecting your software. There is the capability, the compatibility, and the cost. But now I wanna hear from you. Go ahead and drop in the comments of this video. Let me know how long you've been designing, what software you're using to design, and what kinds of things you're designing or hope to be able to design. I'm so excited that you've decided to get started in design. Remember, you can check out my courses for beginner designers in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.